The lamps are going out all over Europe, and we shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. Sir Edward Grey, Foreign Minister during and I believe after World War I. But in the early 18th century and the early 19th century, Britain was often described as being in the state of splendid isolation from the rest of Europe. Britain had a huge empire, and its ruling this empire was its priority. The key to Britain's power was India and the vast resources of its manpower, wealth, and also sugar spices and other stuff like that. Britain relied heavily on Indian troops to control the Europe and the empire. The highest priority of Britain was protecting the trade routes between the British and the Indian seas. Britain's largest navy protected trade links with India and the rest of the world. Despite this focus on the empire, Britain was very interested and keen on the events going on in Europe. To start with the other European countries, they had rival empires as well. Belgium, France had larger empires in Africa than Britain had. Belgium, Congo and pretty much North Africa. They were strongly rivaled by the British and French overseas possessions in North Africa. By the early 19th century, Germany had colonial possessions in Africa as well and began to show an interest in North Africa. Another concern was the country of Russia. For much of the 19th century, they had been in the great game, Russia and Britain they have. They have tried to get to the Pakistanis and the Middle East, but Russia wanted to really take control of the Dardanelles, the area where the Black Sea opened up to the Mediterranean Sea, and this would allow Russian warships and trading ships to easily access Europe. Russia had other ports in the north, but they tended to freeze over in the winter, as you do in Russia. <clears throat> the problem with this is that the Dardanelles were owned by the Turkish and the Ottoman Empire, and Turkey and Russia had long been enemies from the beginning of 1883, no, 1873 to 1875. Britain supported Turkey against the Russians in the Crimean War and other such wars after that with Peabody Hermans and of course lever action rifles and, you know, just moral support, stuff like that. But this was because Britain did not want Russian ships into the Mediterranean, obviously. They were not really ideological, they were not really having the same ideological feelings towards each other. They were just trying to stop Russia from entering the Mediterranean Sea. And the Mediterranean Sea was actually part of Britain's most trusted route to India, which is they go through the Suez Canal from Britain. Alright, so they go from the North Sea, they go around the English Channel, they pass Wales and Ireland, they go through that little gap, then they make a hard right, and then they go to the African Horn, which is where the Suez Canal is, right next to Egypt, and they go to Egypt and make a hard swing past um, Bangladesh, and they end up at the tip of Sri Lanka, which is the tip of India at that time, and the, yeah, that's pretty much how they get to India. Don't quote me on that, I'm not really the best at nautical miles, so don't quote me on that one. Until the 19th century, Britain had more concerned itself about Russia and France than Germany, and even America, well, the relations between Britain and Germany were actually very good, but this began to change, however, when the Kaiser Wilhelm took control of Germany. He was very anxious for Germany to have its place in the sun, for Germany to be a great power, Uber Alice, Uber Alice, Deutsches Land. He felt that Russia in the east and France in the west were encircling Germany. As a result, he built up his armed forces. France and Russia feared Germany did the same, so they did the same as well. During the 19th century, all the great powers of Europe began to build up their armies and their navies. British policy in Europe intended that no country in Europe should be the complete dominant force in Europe. So if Russia, France, Germany, Austria-Hungary, and, and to a lesser extent Turkey, well basically the Ottoman Empire, but Turkey is the one who really sticks out into Europe, um, they would duke it out each other and would actually be a lesser threat to Britain. But by 1907 it became clear that the greatest potential threat to Britain was going to be Germany and not the US. The, the strong, strong economy a large population and of course the most famous military force in the world, Germany, was capable of dominating Europe. As a result, Britain began to support Russia and France and formed the Triple Entente and that is why Britain joined the Triple Entente. Despite being part of the Triple Entente, Britain was actually not committed to the Great War in 1914. The Foreign Secretary, Sir Edward Grey, spent most of the summer of 1914 fiercely trying to reassure Russia and Germany to prevent the war from happening. When the German troops invaded France through true Belgium, that was part of the sleeping plan, Britain had no choice but to go to war. Germany hoped that Britain was actually south of the war altogether. However, the Germans knew that the British promised the defence of Belgium under the Treaty of London of 1839. The Germans wanted the British government to ignore the Treaty of London 
and let the Germans pass through to Belgium. The British the government made much of their duty to actually protect Belgium. Belgian ports were close to British and the German control of Belgium would actually see the serious threat to Britain. In the end, the British refused to ignore the events of August 1914, the 4th of August 1914, when the Germans attacked France through Belgium. Within hours, Britain declared war on Germany. The Kaiser, the Kaiser said how foolish he thought the British were. He said the British had gone to war for the sake of a scrap of paper. Within a few more days, Britain, France and Russia, the Triple Entente, were now officially at war with Germany, Austria-Hungary and later the Ottoman Empire when they declared war in November 1914. It all started in a small local problem in the Balkans turning into the most biggest, the brutalist war the world has ever seen. And even World War II can't trump World War I, even though it's more famous, but this was nothing like the colonial wars of past. This was really, truly modern war, industrial war, the first world war. Well, thanks guys for watching. This is the third time I've literally done this. Um, you know, you got to keep up, you know, you got to keep up the quality. So I'm going to edit it now. It doesn't seem too bad. You know, probably like a, you know, probably like a, you know, a burp here, a sneeze there. Probably a triple, you know, probably a trip over a word, maybe once or twice, but pretty good so far because I, I kind of had the knowledge. I was actually going to do a free rem script, you know, where I just talk about kind of the key points, but hey, it's the last fully dedicated season, so might as well go out with a bang, am I right? So, um, of course, like I tell most of you guys, um, I'm going to try and find a job between now and by the time the British season ends. So, if that does happen, of course, um, if it doesn't happen, uh, Austria-Hungary will be at least like once or like at least once a day until I find a job and then the normal schedule of nine of 2016 will actually come back will be um, three times a day or a sp and you get a bonus one Saturday if I'm either off or work to like probably like two o'clock but um, more than likely if I'm off you will get a bonus Saturday one but um, other than that that's pretty much all I have to say Hope you enjoyed Law Britannia. This is the last fully dedicated season. Maybe Austria Hungary might be. But um we'll have to wait and see who calls first. But I hope to get a job soon. But um leave you know, enjoy yourself, learn something, and I'll see you tomorrow pretty much. Oh yeah, I have to do like one or two other things for Russia, but we will sneak them in during the end of Britain. Well, we could probably sneak them in tomorrow if anything, because Britain doesn't really have a lot of plans or politics. Okay. I'm going to end the video before it gets too much. Alright, learn something.